it to point number five. It's a debate on the role of local and regional authorities in the context of the EU-UK partnership. It is my pleasure and honor to welcome Vice President of the European Commissioner, uh, Maros Sefcovic. I think he's online and he's uh, with us. Uh, thank you so much for being with us. And um, the situation right now, some years from uh, Brexit, um, invites us to assess where we are from the local and regional authorities' point of view. We have made some work. We have participated in the uh, group that is monitoring this, uh, this process. We would hope that uh, from uh, the UK side there was, there was all, also possible to have local and regional authorities. But your participation, Mr. Vice President, and the debate that we will follow that will allow us to, at this point, to assess how things are going from that point of view. So without further delay, Vice President Sefcovic, you have the floor. I invite you to take the floor for about eight minutes. Thank you. Uh, I think, please press the speak button. Uh, I think we're online. Everything is ready just to press the speak button, Vice President. Uh, that was our initial plan, to have Vice President Sefcovic giving us an insight. The information I have is that is connected. Everything is ready. Is this a technical issue? No technical issue? It's, uh, they told me it's just a question of pushing the button. Maybe we will move to you. Yes. Well, um, we'll try to solve this technical issue briefly. Meanwhile, we'll proceed to our colleague, Michael Murphy, to the presentation of an opinion strengthening the EU-UK relationship at subnational level and remedying the territorial impact of the UK's withdrawal from the EU. Michael, you have the floor for five minutes. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Commissioner Sefcovic for joining us today. Uh, I look forward to his uh, intervention uh, perhaps later uh, I'm delighted to present this opinion uh, for adoption today, this draft opinion, uh, strengthening the EU-UK relationship at the sub-national level and remedying the territorial impact of the UK's withdrawal from the European Union. Uh, this opinion, colleagues, will be one of the first institutional positions looking beyond uh, the intergovernmental relationship. The relationship between the EU and the UK is still very much determined by the trade and cooperation uh, agreement, which we know prioritizes the intergovernmental relationship. However, the TCA lacks territorial depth. The relationship between the EU and the UK is different, and the TCA is not just a typical free trade agreement. The TCA has been agreed with a former EU member state, not like with a normal third country, so the future relationship is different and perhaps needs to be more flexible. The voice of local and regional authorities needs to be formally recognised and heard in the implementation of the TCA. 
I recognise that the EU UK contact group in the CUR is the only institutional mechanism providing a forum for continued dialogue between uh, the EU and UK local and regional authorities. My opinion has three concrete asks. Firstly, I am therefore calling for the formal recognition of the CUR UK contact group in the TCA and I'm calling for the Commission to re-examine the structures of the Joint Partnership Council to seek to address this lack of territorial depth. Secondly, on the implementation of the Brexit Adjustment Reserve, the COR therefore insists that the provision of the BAR regulation relating to the involvement of local and regional communities in the BAR's implementation and the reporting at NUTS 2 level are fully respected. And finally, I am asking for the European Parliament to seek to formalise interaction with the COR ahead of their meetings as part of the EU-UK Parliamentary Partnership Assembly, the PPA. I welcome the positive comments on this point at the recent sixth meeting of the contact group held in Cardiff, and I know discussions are underway to confirm the recognition of an observer status of the CUR and its UK partners in the workings of the PPA. On avenues and areas for future cooperation, I have noticed the willingness from the grassroots of local uh, and regional government for ongoing, even enhanced relationship with EU counterparts in this post-Brexit area. I also recognise that the narrative is, regrettably, not the same as the account provided at national UK government level. We cannot just wait for a step change in the UK national government's approach to Europe for more encouragement and facilitation of EU-UK sub-national relations in concrete areas of mutual cooperation. As local government is the level closest to the citizen, I firmly believe there is an onus on us all to better grasp and understand the potential of relations and partnerships at EU-UK sub-national level. In conclusion, I welcome the amendments put forward by you, my colleagues, and I'm willing to accept all of these as they enhance the clarity within the opinion. Before I commend this opinion to you this afternoon, I just want to thank a number of individuals in conclusion. Firstly, my expert, Theresa Lennon, who heads up the Irish Regents Office here uh, in Brussels for her extraordinary uh, assistance. To Matthew in the Civic Sa Secretariat for his exceptional help as well. I'd also like to acknowledge the assistance of Donald Kennedy within the EPP group. I'd like to acknowledge the assistance of the Chair of the CUR UK Contact Group, like Chosne Girard, and indeed the members of the wider contact uh, group. Uh, Tig, also in the Irish Regions Office, and more importantly, you're the you the members for your support for your engagement in the quarter civics and econ commission uh, meetings. It's now my pleasure, Chair, to commend this opinion to you this afternoon. Thank you for listening. Thank you. We have one request for the floor. Zitelli Ferrari, you have the floor for one minute. Muchas gracias, Presidente. Uh Thanks very much. I'd like to congratulate Mr Murphy on the opinion with which we totally agree. Just quickly, I'd like to highlight the importance of sharing knowledge with the UK. Programmes such as Horizon Europe and other international cooperation programmes as well. We also think it's important to continue looking into new methods and models of cooperation and funding with subnational institutions in line with uh, all of the strategies that you were talking about. Finally, the impact of economic and trade relations of Brexit is important, and we need to think about the issues such as new customer, uh, customs controls and the effect that they have on the logistics chain. In this regard, I'd like to recall the importance of the simplification of administrative import procedures as one of the best ways of supporting SMEs mainly. Thank you very much. Mr. Berman, you have the floor for one minute. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. I think after the, all the stories we heard from Ukraine, it's very humbling to see uh, what the work is, uh, is in the position is that the uh, mayors from Ukraine are in. 
And uh, I think this also is a strong uh, warning or a strong uh, underlining of the uh, EU as a partnership for peace. And uh, even though in Brexit it might not be, or in EU-UK uh, relations, it might seem very distant to talk about the situation in Ukraine, I'd like to call into memory the situation we had in May last year where we had two naval vessels from the, the UK and two naval vessels from France more or less in a standoff at Jersey Island uh, in, the, uh, uh, in the English Channel. So we, had, we have some tense moments that were inconceivable before Brexit. And uh, I think this is a warning we should all sh take very seriously. In my province of Flevoland in the Netherlands, we have a strong fishery community uh, that is also hit hard by the, the, the consequences of Brexit. And, uh, Thank you. Now, Michael Murphy, do you want to have some final remarks? No? So this concludes the presentation of this opinion. We go back to the debate with Vice President uh, Sefcovic. Now I think he's connected. Welcome, Vice President. You have the floor. We invite you to take the floor for about eight minutes. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. I can hear you. Go ahead. Go ahead. You can, you can hear. hear me. That's fantastic. Now, first and foremost, thank you very much for your kind invitation. And I also am uh, very thankful to the, to the rapporteur, Mr. Murphy, and uh, uh, also to the previous, uh, previous uh, speakers. And I will, I will come to the, to the points in a second. But uh, first and foremost, I uh, really would like to, to appreciate uh, all the agenda, all the emotions expressed all the involvement for the plight uh, of our Ukrainian Ukrainian friends. And uh, I can only tell you how much uh, the Commission appreciates the support of the Committee of Regions uh, uh, for Ukraine, uh, for our work, where I'm sure all of us want to, to help them as much uh, as possible to liberate the country. And that we are already planning right now how to help them to rebuild it, to be democratic, prosperous, and, and, and truly uh, European European uh, country uh, as as we know it uh, in our EU and uh, among our EU uh, member states. And I really want to to thank you also for all the uh, remarks about uh, the lessons learned uh, from uh, the uh, Russian invasion. What it means for us if it comes to security, to defence. Uh, uh, what we have to do uh, to be more secure from the point of view of uh, energy uh, supplies. And I want to thank uh, all the honorable members of the Committee of Regions, uh, because I'm sure that all of them have been working extremely hard uh, uh, to welcome the Ukrainian refugees. As you know, I, I'm from Slovakia, and uh, I know what a challenge this was for the local authority, for the local governments, for mayors, for local councillors, to make sure that not only that uh, hospitality offered uh, uh, by, by our citizens, but also by the, the local actors uh, being in place uh, so the gyms could be transformed into shelters, that the food was offered to the women and children coming in huge distress uh, from, uh, from Ukraine, and uh, that all that was managed with such a remarkable uh, solidarity upon which we all can be proud of. And I think it was very important in that moment because this crisis is going with us to stay and Ukraine will need a lot of uh, support from all of us. And therefore, once again, I want to thank you uh, for the agenda of today, for the way how the Committee of Regions uh, uh, was uh, uh, approaching this very, very important issue for the, for the uh, future of Ukraine, but I also would say for the future of Europe. And uh, as uh, uh, we just heard a minute ago, of course, today we are going to discuss a totally different uh, uh, situation because we, we all know that the uh, United Kingdom uh, left uh, the uh, European Union. It was the choice uh, of the United Kingdom. And you know that uh, uh, we had to and we have uh, built uh, a new relationship uh, with UK as uh, the third countries. And therefore, uh, once again, I'm very obliged to you for not only preparation of that uh, report of Mr. McMurphy, but also for the possibility to discuss with you uh, directly the role of local, local and regional 
authorities in this new context of the EU-UK uh, relations. Now we can say that with uh, more than a year having passed in the trade and uh, uh, cooperation agreement came into force, uh, that this is indeed uh, a timely opportunity to take stock of these developments uh, and also to uh, allow us uh, uh, to look uh, at uh, overall picture of uh, these developments uh, uh, over this time. As I'm sure all of your honorable members know, our overriding uh, objective uh, uh, remains the same, and it is to establish a positive and stable relationship uh, with the United Kingdom. We are the partners of, with the shared values. Uh, we have to face uh, the number of uh, global challenges uh, side by side, not least uh, uh, the Russian aggressions uh, uh, against uh, Ukraine, its uh, wide-ranging impacts, uh, and all the, the consequences for the future. And here I want to say that uh, the cooperation with the UK was uh, indeed remarkable. But who, today we are here to, to discuss uh, uh, two binding agreements which have been signed with the United Kingdom, the withdrawal agreement and uh, the trade and uh, cooperation agreement, which uh, in uh, our view uh, provide very solid foundation for achieving this uh, new relationship with the UK as a third country. As you know, the protocol on Ireland and Northern Ireland is an integral part of the withdrawal agreement, and it actually represents uh, the solution agreed uh, with the UK government to protect the Good Friday Belfast Agreement, uh, to avoid uh, a hard border on the island of Ireland, but also to protect the integrity of the uh, EU single market. Since the beginning, the Commission has been fully committed uh, to implementing a withdrawal agreement uh, as agreed, signed and ratified by both the EU and the UK. We have maintained uh, the constructive approach, focusing on finding practical solutions to the issues that are affecting uh, people and businesses on the ground uh, in uh, Northern Ireland. And I myself visited uh, Northern Ireland last September. When I'm talking about the, the practical uh, solution. I'm talking about the package of bespoke arrangements uh, we put forward uh, in October, which was designed to further facilitate uh, the movement of goods between Great Britain and uh, Northern Ireland while preserving the single market. It provides for significant easements for operators in Northern Ireland notably in the areas of medicine supply, sanitary and phytosanitary measures, and customs. It also addresses strength and participation of uh, Northern Ireland shareholders in the implementation of the protocol. As I have uh, previously underlined, there was a particular urgency to act over medicines. The Commission therefore put forward in December a series of legislative proposals to ensure both the continuous supply of medicines from Great Britain uh, to Northern Ireland and the access to the same medicine at the same time across the whole United Kingdom. The European Parliament and the Council have dealt with this fight quickly, efficiently. I would like to thank them for that. And uh, now we can be uh, very pleased to say that the EU has indeed delivered on this promise, and we did it in record time. We've been holding intensive calls with the UK, both at the political and technical level, in order to seek joint solutions to the remaining challenges around the protocol. On 21st, uh, 21st of February, I co-chaired a joint committee meeting alongside the UK Foreign Secretary, Liz Truss, showing that we continue to operate in the established governance uh, framework. Following the meeting, we issued a joint statement highlighting that uh, we remain determined to find durable solutions for the benefit of people, businesses, and stability in Northern Ireland. And this still remains our overarching aim. 
With regards to the trade and cooperation agreement, uh, we have held uh, initial meetings uh, of its uh, joint uh, bodies, including the Partnership Council and 19 uh, committees. While we are closely following uh, the implementation of the entire agreement, the areas of fisheries and the level playing field have required particular attention. I think it is uh, worthwhile underlying once again that the TCA is not and can never be a replacement for the EU membership. The UK chose to end the free movement of people and uh, leave the single market and the customs union. As a result, there is no longer as friction, as, as a result, the trade is uh, no longer as frictionless and as uh, dynamic as it was uh, before. And you know very well that it was not our European choice. But this is the direct consequence of the type of Brexit chosen by the UK government. Businesses on both sides uh, of the channel have to adapt uh, to this new reality, especially uh, in the light of other factors affecting trade flows, such as COVID-19 pandemics. Let me now turn to the role of the local and regional authorities in the concept, uh, context of EU-UK relations, and in particular about the territorial dimension of the TCA. This is, of course, an issue of particular interest to you and the focus of the draft opinion, which you will adopt uh, later today. I want once again to commend uh, the rapporteur, Mr. Michael Murphy, uh, for his extensive work on this. And I welcome the ambition of the committee to cooperate uh, with the UK at the local and regional level, albeit within the confines of the type of Brexit chosen by the UK government. While the committee has no formal role when it comes to the EU international agreements, the Commission's door is always open to discuss these issues, to provide information and to listen to the voice uh, of regions. And we look forward to continuing the regular, regular exchanges uh, we have had with the committee's uh, UK contact group over the past two years as uh, we move forward with the implementation of the trade and cooperation agreement. And uh, we are already working to support the people and businesses most affected by Brexit. For example, the Peace Plus initiative helps uh, finance projects across Northern Ireland and uh, the border counties, which are aimed at reconciling communities and contributing to peace, including co-financing from Ireland and the United Kingdom Funding under Peace Plus will amount to more than 1 billion euros. I personally uh, visited uh, the community at uh, Flurry Bridge, and I was extremely impressed uh, by the progress the community have achieved uh, over the last uh, 20 years. I saw the pictures, I saw the video, how uh, this community looked uh, during the time of uh, troubles and what a difference uh, the EU involvement, peace and business development and intercommunal work has done uh, to this place, how the business community is developing, how uh, the new opportunities are created and how the people on the both sides uh, of uh, the border wanted this to continue. I personally visited uh, Schenkel uh, road uh, center for the project uh, for the people from the uh, both communities in Belfast and throughout the, the whole uh, Northern Ireland uh, are very often organized and promoted uh, extremely efficient and hardworking women who are working at this center. And I very much appreciated and took it away from me how important the Peace Plus and European support was uh, for their work. And therefore, I think we just have to continue our uh, work, our efforts here, because uh, as we see elsewhere in the world, uh, the peace is very much worth to work for, and uh, we have to show our commitment, our support, our encouragement, and our political involvement to promote peace uh, at every possible occasion. 
As you know, and uh, the previous speakers uh, referred uh, uh, also to the Brexit Adjustment uh, Reserve. Totally uh, more than 5 billion euros uh, have been uh, not only allocated, but already started uh, to flow to the regions and sectors where it is uh, needed uh, the most to help businesses, workers and uh, local communities. So to conclude, uh, dear Vice, Vice Presidents and Honourable uh, Members of the Committee of Regions, I once again would like uh, to, uh, to thank the Committee for all its efforts to connect regions in the EU and uh, the UK, but also for, for giving me uh, this opportunity uh, to update you on our work uh, in uh, this area. I very much appreciate your interest. I very much uh, appreciate the, the invitations to work more together, and we are very much uh, looking forward not only to our exchanges, but also to our common work so we will deliver uh, for the regions in Europe and also for our good relationship uh, with your partners uh, in uh, the UK. Thank you very much. Thank you, Vice President. Now we have some members that ask for the floor. We invite you to stay with us for uh, final remarks, if you want, at the final of this. Uh, now I give the floor to Michael Murphy for two minutes. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, Vice President, first to uh, reiterate, and I know from previous pronouncement that you agree, uh, Brexit is not an Irish question, or at least not just an Irish question. There has been an asymmetric impact across many regions, from my own region in the southeast of Ireland, Hessen in Germany, to West Sweden, Vento, and Brittany, amongst others. I know you're sensitive to the particularities of Northern Ireland, and indeed the Northern Ireland Protocol, and the importance of the protocol in terms of ensuring no hard border on the island of Ireland, and indeed protecting the single market. Breaking down into two parts the context of my forthcoming opinion, first of all, strengthening the EU-UK relationship at the sub-national level and remedying the territorial impact of the UK's withdrawal from the EU. Vice President, I appeal to you, for local and regional authorities, we cannot simply wait for there to be a step change in the approach of the national UK government when there is an onus on all of us to better grasp and understand the potential of relations, projects, initiatives at the EU-UK sub-national level and building on decades of cross-border uh, cooperation over many programmes, including my own region, for example, the Ireland-Wales programme. The future of student exchanges, collaborating on climate adaptation and change, and scoping out by regional trade agencies of alternative markets, all unfinished business. Finally, on the Brexit Adjustment Reserve, I want to welcome your work in this regard and the recent disbursements. Vice President, we've had excellent collaboration with your team and your services, for which I and my team are very, very grateful. Thank you for your attention and for being with us today. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Now I give the floor to Jesus Gamalho Allier for two minutes. Thank you very much. There's extremely poor sound, making it very difficult to interpret. In fact, it's impossible. Unfortunately, the interpreter will have to turn off. Los objetivos fundamentales de nuestro comité es tratar de influir en la legislación europea desde una perspectiva regional y local. Talking about legislation on a regional and local level, it's important to be present when it comes to integration and. Brexit has been one of the major stumbling blocks. That's why the regions uh, support and welcome the fund. Although we should reiterate that the provisions of the regulation on the fund concerning participa pa participation of regional bodies need to be totally respected. Unfortunately, the interpretation cannot continue. El fondo es naturalmente insuficiente. Es necesario demandar un mayor reconocimiento institucional de las relaciones entre la Unión Europea y el Reino Unido a nivel subnacional. Hemos detectado una voluntad de las regiones británicas y de la Unión Europea para apoyarnos 
en la participación en programas europeos y respecto al acuerdo de comercio y cooperación necesitamos que las entidades regionales y locales también participemos, busquemos fórmulas para participar en su ejecución, como ha señalado el propio vicepresidente. No quisiera terminar mi intervención sin felicitar al colega Murphy por su excelente trabajo. Ha sabido aglutinar todas nuestras demandas en su dictamen, de manera que muchas gracias, Michael. Muchas gracias, eh, vicepresidente. Muchas gracias. Isilda Gomes, cuatro minutos. Gracias, Ms. Gomes, cuatro minutos. No passado, dia 18 de março, o grupo. Thank you very much. As said on the 18th of March, the contact group with Brexit held its sixth meeting. I'd like to use this opportunity to thank those who organized this meeting because the work was extremely well done and the meeting was extremely fruitful. I should say that the work took place in an open, collaborative manner between the members of the national governments and parliaments and also with the representatives of the UK government. It was a frank and open dialogue. I'd like to share with you a couple of conclusions drawn from the sixth meeting that took place in five points, if I may. First. It can be difficult, but on the request from the Committee of the Regions to have observer status in the parliamentary partnership, we have to continue following up and monitoring, and we hope for a positive response. As the Committee of the Regions, we're going to defend a revision of the agreement so that it includes the recognition of uh, cooperation. And my colleague said here that it's an issue of partnerships with regions and municipalities, and this has to be able to take place. This agreement needs to be put in place, and I think we should actually go beyond the provisions of the agreement with diplomacy on issues related to global governance and then cooperation in the field of education, research and culture. Having said that, I welcome the effort undertaken by the Welsh Government because the programme allows for exchanges between uh, students from Wales and the EU to continue. They have provided 65 million euros uh, to replace the Erasmus programme, and this is a huge loss for the European Union. The fact that our students can no longer go and spend their Erasmus year in the UK. So I'd like to underscore the role of Wales in this. And finally, given the complexity of the whole process, I do hope that the contact group will continue its work because, of course, it hasn't yet been concluded. We've got the uh, examination that's going to be taking place in summer 2022, but it's essential given the current situation in Europe. The UK may have left the European Union, but it's still a European country, and therefore everything that affects the EU affects the UK. That's why I think we need to continue to work along these lines. We need to be able to review the agreements where necessary. Thank you. Three minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I also just had a moment to speak uh, earlier, so I'll keep it short. And uh, I'd like to make two points. Uh, the first point I'd like to make is about the EU-UK Parliamentary Partnership Assembly. 
I think more people made this point already, so it would be good if we would be able to get a, uh, observer status there. I'd like to support the, the point made by other people before, and we really deplore the fact that um, the people in the UK are not member of or are not able to uh, benefit from the Erasmus program anymore, or vice versa. We are uh, through the Erasmus program. Uh, able to benefit from the uh, academic possibilities the UK offers. So we would really like to be able to support initiatives like the, the Welsh, uh, Welsh initiative, the TAFE initiative uh, for uh, youth mobility. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Kovax. Kovax, two and a half minutes. Thank you very much. President, Commissioner, dear colleagues, there has been much discussion over the past months on the future of the EU-UK subnational relations after Brexit. In the Committee of the Regions itself, this has largely followed the creation of the Committee of the Regions UK Contact Group and the opinion of Mr Murphy. We have also discussed these questions together with the recent visit of our contact group uh, to the Welsh SNEDIT. Among the various issues discussed, there is one which is widely agreed upon, and that is a definite need for deeper collaboration between the local and regional authorities of the European Union and of the United Kingdom. As has been rightly noted in the uh, Committee of the Region opinion, the EU-UK Trade and Cooperation Agreement includes areas which are of member state competence. The TCA also includes areas for civil society involvement. While this may be the case, we regret that certain level of acknowledgement has not been granted to cooperation between local governments. Our cooperation at this level, given that the UK cannot any longer take part in the meetings of the Committee of the Region, should be better defined, re regularised and formalised. Doing so would help to strengthen the UK's relationship with the EU, which is a special relationship due to its former EU membership its geographic and economic proximity and their continued participation in many EU programmes. We have noted that many of the problems and opportunities raised by Brexit may not necessarily fall within the clear boundary of any particular member state, nor might they be best addressed at the level of EU-UK relations. Instead, following the principle of subsidiarity, I believe that many of these questions are best answered by local and regional authorities and thus require a framework for greater inter-regional cooperation in addition, in addition to the intergovernmental channels. Such new channel could be broadened only if we convincingly reassure the UK and our central governments that the goal is not to bypass them. Press the button. Phone. Does the two minutes start again now? Thank you. <laughs> I hope there are. Chair, Commissioner Stefkovic, members of the Committee of the Regions, I would like to wholeheartedly thank you, Commissioner Stefkovic, for all of your work and for standing with Ireland and the other EU regions during the negotiations with. Great Britain has moved on to deal with much more urgent crisis since the Brexit negotiations concluded with the withdrawal agreement. First we had COVID and now we have the terrible and shocking situation in Ukraine. And our, all our thoughts, and my thoughts in particular, goes to those who have suffered loss of life and has been displaced by this despicable and unnecessary war that has been brought on by the Russian regime. However, there are parts of the aspects of the UK government's continued statements threatening to break the Northern Ireland Protocol, which are deeply worrying. The EU has been flexible in the implementation of the agreement, and the recent agreement on medicines is one example of this flexibility. But the withdrawal rights of EU citizens and the creation of new residency rights is deeply worrying and completely against what people want. I hope the European Commission can and will remain firm in this regard. 
We have enjoyed many years of cooperation with the developed nations of the UK as well as local authorities and I believe we need to find new ways to foster this relationship. Most UK nations are willing to cooperate. This has been repeated on numerous occasions by our friends in Scotland, Wales and indeed Northern Ireland, which I live beside. I'd like to see many more city and country, county trainings. There is more scope for regions like Flanders and Scotland to cooperate together and open the bridges that have been blocked. Unfortunately, I see more obstacles ahead if we have a blocked Northern Ireland Assembly after the elections next week. The DUP play political football with the EU and the UK withdrawal agreement. I hope I am wrong regarding this election and that we can see a smoother future for the EU and the UK. And I just want to thank Rapporteur Murphy and his expert, Theresa. Thank you. Frey, two minutes. Sehr geehrter Herr Präsident, Herr Kommissar. Uh, Commissioner, Chairman, colleagues, Brexit uh, was and still is a mistake. But I would like to uh, focus uh, on uh, the monitoring report published uh, in uh, March uh, 2021 of uh, the uh, Council of Europe uh, on the uh, situation of local governance uh, in the UK. Uh, because uh, there has been a worrying uh, development uh, towards centralization of uh, local and regional powers. Local and regional governmental level have been losing more and more powers over the years, uh, being ceded uh, to uh, the central government. Uh, there's the The UK has still not acceded to the relevant charter on local government powers. A national democracy can only work properly if the local and regional democracies work well and are resilient. So if in the European Union we want to work with the UK at the local level, we have to bear in mind that, first of all, uh, the uh, uh, powers on the other side uh, might not uh, be uh, as well backed uh, as they are in our own country or region. And secondly, uh, local and regional structures of our partners uh, in the UK need to be uh, strengthened uh, so that any further uh, concentration of power in Downing Street is avoided. Uh, for example, uh, uh, we could uh, have uh, Scotland being an, in, a partner uh, with uh, in Erasmus uh, independently because uh, Scotland is uh, responsible for its own education system. So I would like to ask the Commissioner uh, to think about uh, 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 allowing the regional powers to participate in EU programmes. Brox, one minute. Uh, Chairman, colleagues, since uh, the recent Russian aggression in uh, Ukraine, the European Union and the UK have been working together a little bit more closely. A regional uh, levels uh, uh, can ensure that this continues to happen. In North Rhine-Westphalia in 2021, uh, we uh, had the 75th anniversary of our friendly relationship. Uh, uh, this particular friendship uh, is marked by a lot of uh, school exchanges, town twinning schemes, cultural cooperation and a closer economic uh, ties. Unfortunately, since Brexit, we've seen a, a backsliding uh, for uh, uh, in goods uh, trade uh, pharmaceutical products being an example. I think we have to reverse this trend. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this can only happen if the potential of regional relations is exploited or with the uh, UK. Dwayne Stanley, one minute. Mm -hmm. Press the button. Thank you. You can hear me now. Uh, Commissioner, uh, the protocol protects the all-island economy and prevents a hard border on the island of Ireland. Moves by the British government to circumvent the protocol legally within the past week must be totally resisted. Any unilateral action by the British government is a breach of international law. The impact of Brexit has pulled the north of Ireland 
out of the European Union against the wishes of the majority. The North of Ireland voted to remain in the EU. The facts are that trade between the North and the South of Ireland have increased dramatically since the protocol was activated. You, Commissioner, have acted in good faith. The European Commission took steps earlier this month to resolve the medicines issue and continue for other solutions. My party, Sinn Féin, welcomes that. The EU must continue to protect the Good Friday Agreement and the Protocol. All efforts must be made post-Assembly election to get... Thank you. Now we have Ms. Fernandez Viana, Paula Fernandez Viana. Buenas tardes de nuevo. Good afternoon again. With regard to the agreement, I think it's positive. It shows that the European Union and the UK can start a new chapter. Regions such as Cantabria have had close times with the UK for some time, and that's why we're well placed for a general uh, vision of the relationship. The sound is extremely poor, making it hard to hear what the speaker is saying. In this regard, a macro-regional strategy might be a good idea for relationships with the regions in the UK. We need to find a way of involvement in issues such as research, innovation, renewable energies and the marine environment. We welcome the implementation of these programs. But we want to participate directly in their management. If we use criteria that don't take into account the social reality... President Sefcovic to take the floor for about three minutes to final remarks. Mr. Vice President, you have the floor. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Vice President, and I would like to thank all the speakers for the intervention, uh, for the support, for the kind words, but also for encouragement uh, for all of us uh, to do even better uh, in, in the future. I totally agree with uh, our rapporteur, with Mr. Murphy, that uh, clearly the Brexit is not only Irish problem. Uh, he is absolutely right, even though, even though we know that the Ireland uh, is the most affected uh, country. But we are working very closely with uh, uh, all the countries and all the regions, especially in the coastal member states, who in particular had uh, to adjust uh, to this uh, uh, new reality. And I'm very glad that also in this regard, uh, if you look to the uh, Brexit adjustment reserve, as uh, Mr. Uh, Gamaldo Aller has alluded to, I'm glad to report that uh, already 73% uh, of the financial resources allocated uh, for the Brexit adjustment reserve for this year being already allocated. I think it's, it's a big success that we could have done uh, so quickly, and I'm, I'm sure that it's also thanks to the high quality of projects which have been presented and the good administration of this of these funds on, uh, on, the, on the ground. And as always, uh, uh, the Commission is, of course, encouraging uh, all member states to work as closely as possible with uh, regional and uh, local authorities, uh, in preparation and for concrete uh, implementation of the of the projects, Madam uh, Gomez, Mr. Eisenbaum, uh, but also Mr. Frey, been all uh, referring to uh, unfortunate uh, um, uh, consequences for the student exchanges. I think that I'm not uh, uh, revealing a big secret, but I can tell you that until the the last uh, minute of the of the negotiations, which uh, uh, concluded. Uh, uh, the TCA, uh, we at the Commission and our President Ursula von der Leyen been insisting on, on making sure that uh, we can continue our cooperation within the Erasmus. Unfortunately, the decision of the UK government was a different one. They decided to go for uh, their own scheme, uh, which, is the, which is the case. And uh, of course, uh, now uh, we have all to, to adjust uh, to, the, uh, to the new uh, reality. Uh, to Mr. Uh, Stenson, I would like uh, to thank you for your kind words concerning the supply of medicines uh, uh, to, to Northern Ireland. It was not an easy thing to do, but by these very concrete examples, we demonstrated that we are ready to change our legislation if necessary. 
to make sure that uh, we would really uh, uh, make it uh, very clear that what we are doing here uh, in implementing the protocol on Ireland and Northern Ireland, we are promoting peace, we are protecting the results of the Good Friday Agreement. We want to deliver for the benefits of the people, uh, businesses uh, in uh, Northern Ireland. And that's a guiding principle for all other outstanding uh, issues uh, which we are discussing with the, with the, with the UK uh, government and will continue to do so. I just really would like to also ensure that if it comes to citizens' rights, we are following the issue very, very closely on our own. We are following the work of independent um, authority in, in the UK and discussing all outstanding issues with our UK partners uh, regularly. I know that my time is up, uh, uh, Mr. Vice President, so I really would like to thank all the uh, colleagues uh, uh, for excellent intervention, rapporteur for the, uh, for the great report, and uh, just to promise you that we will be working as closely with you as we, we have been until now, and I look forward to our future discussion on this or other topics. Thank you very much, Mr. Vice President. Thank you, uh, Vice President, for your uh, participation. It was an honor and pleasure to have you. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, we have a break now. We will resume our session at 5.30, starting with point number seven. Have a good break. Okay.